Hi friends, I'm Jeff VG. I'm into my second week here on Logic for the iPad. And just so you know where I'm coming from, I've been a Logic user on Mac for more than 20 years, and I've been doing iOS music production for about four, using various different apps. As long as I keep coming across these tips and tricks, I'm gonna create more videos. If you like them, click on the like button. In this particular video, I'm addressing how to import samples from a third party source. It isn't obvious. And I'm going all old school by using some really old iOS apps that were distributed by Novation. I think you'll find it interesting. One unintended side effect of the release of Logic Pro for iPad is that it's renewed my interest in iOS music production. You know, I've been at this a while and I'm really quite impressed with some of the features that have been built into this thing. I get a real kick out of it find myself playing with my iPad a lot more than I used to. But along the way, I have found compromises, and I created a video on that, the last one I did on Logic Pro for iPad, and there's a link to that up above and in the description if you'd like to get caught up on what those compromises are. But one of the features that was a little bit confusing to me was how to import primarily loops from other sources. When you open up the browser on the left side of Logic, you can browse through the loops and there's some really great ways to filter the content. You know, you can say, I just want to see, uh, you know, full kits. Of course, browsing the loops is same as what we're used to before. That's all kind of great. But what if you've got loops that you want to bring in here from your own loop library or another iOS music app? And how do you get them in? An old music app that I've been using for a long time is from Amplify, which is a company owned by Novation. It's called Launchpad. And it's just a great way to browse samples from their sample library. So it's a fun little tool to play around with. If you subscribe to their Amplify Sounds, you're gonna get new sound libraries available every once in a while. Some of them are really good. So here's one called Modular Jazz. You can preview it. I don't know how they do it, but it downloads very quickly. So here you go, I've got a bunch of new sounds. I might listen to some. But this tool has got its limitations. Uh, yeah, you can do effects and it's got volume control, but there's no way to create a song really with this. And what I found was I was missing the DAW-like experience that I'm used to using Logic. So essentially you've got a grid here. You've got, you know, eight sounds across the top. You've got, and for the first column, you've got some drum beats. And then maybe some percussion and a bass. an eight by six grid of loops, but no easy way to export those loops. Except there's another program, Blocks Wave. And Blocks Wave is um, sort of a companion program. Just gonna call that Mod Jazz. To use this browser, you can look at the packs that are available. Modular Jazz. By clicking on that pack, I see all of the samples organized into bass drums effects melodic and percussion and one of the things you can do in blocks wave is that you can load those samples into this grid so i'm just going to start by putting some of them in here so you get an idea of how this goes i'm going to first load uh, these drum kits okay and then in the next bank i'm going to load bass sounds Yeah, it sounds dumb to have all the bass play sounds playing at the same time, but you'll see there's a there's a method to this madness. Okay, there we go. So I've loaded a bunch of samples, and the reason I did this in Blocks Wave is that you can export these all as files, whereas in Launchpad you cannot. So if I click on the export button, I can launch them as something called project files and I'm and they're going to be wave files and I'm going to save them 
into a folder I call iOS projects. I'm going to create a zip file with all the individual files in it. So if we go look at it in files, mod jazz zip, if I double click on that, it'll expand it into a folder. And if I look in that folder, I've got all of the individual sample files. Now, unfortunately, the naming of them coincides with the way Blocks Wave is organized. So what you see here is mod jazz, 140 beats per minute in B minor, 6-1, And now I'm going to open up Logic and I'm going to create a new project in Logic. And I'm going to use the live loops just as an example to show you how this works. How do I get access to them? Jump back into the Files app and click on the three dots up at the top that have the view options that are built into iOS. The feature I want to use is the slide over capability because that's going to allow me to drag and drop these files into the grid that's in Logic. First one, just put it there. Then I'll put the second drum beat over here. You can preview them. Okay, I've effectively recreated a section of the grid that was in Launchpad. But remember, in Launchpad, there wasn't a lot I could do with it. But now that it's in Logic, I can do all kinds of things with it. I can play entire scenes. I can organize my performance. I can drag these around. And I think more importantly, I can include other content if I want. And I hear, I want to include this uh, bungalow sound. I could just drag this over and add it into my, uh, into my live loops. I think what was missing for me in iOS music production was I had tried lots of apps like Cubasis and Beatmaker 3, AUM, Drambo, some groove boxes. They're all great and they all have a unique approach to creating music on an iPad especially taking advantage of the touchscreen. But I was missing kind of the familiar Logic DAW experience because that's where I had some expertise. So I'm just going to create an empty tracks project here and I'll just add an audio track so there's something there. I'll show you what it's like to import, again, those samples from another program, but into the tracks view. So I'm going into files and I'm going to navigate my way to the local the folder where I had stored some of those uh, samples. And there's a bunch of samples in here. You could listen to them. Interesting drum sample. And I'm going to change this into that slide over view so that I can drag these into Logic. And I'm going to take this drum loop over here and I'm going to drop it in here. Now, that drum loop is at 105 beats per minute, so it doesn't fit perfectly into the grid. So I got to change the tempo of the song. 105 and while I'm there I might as well change the key because these loops are in A minor by default C major was the key of a new project so if I listen to that and if I want to loop it I can click on the loop feature and just drag it out for a few bars what's this sound like well that's a really weird sound Well, that's a strange one too. This must be some of the effects. Okay, there's one I might use. So I'm going to drag that one in as well. I'm going to have that start after two bars. So I'm creating kind of an arrangement as I go here. I might use that right at the beginning. And as I go through this process, I'm picking the samples that I might want to use to compose. <laughs> Just leave it in there. Let's see how this sounds. Need to extend those drums a bit for the whole thing. I used to have to do this in multiple steps with some different tools. It's really nice to just be able to do this all on the iPad interactively. I do use the pencil, use my fingers, but I don't really need to carry around a MIDI controller or anything like that. That feature within files to turn that into slide overview is very key 
if you're looking to bring content into Logic. It wasn't obvious to me how to do that at first, and once I figured it out, it really opens up a whole other world. Hey, if this is the kind of blah, 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 blah. Huh. Hey, if this is the kind of content you find interesting and helpful, click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.